The Republic was ideological in many of its policies, and for this reason it became a hotbed for criminal enterprises. But why exactly was the Republic so good for criminals, and how did the Clone Wars affect this? Now, the Republic had very good intentions. It was supposed to be a galaxy-wide democracy, which is a very noble goal. However, as we've discussed in many previous videos, the size of the Republic made it very slow to act. It was a large ship that was slow to turn. Being a democracy made up of countless worlds, systems, and species meant that oversight was very difficult to enforce. In the early days, it only really had the Judiciators and the Jedi to enforce its laws. And like it or not, they just didn't have the jurisdiction that they needed. Much of the time, you'd have to go to a world or system's head to gain permission to conduct a mission in their territory. And this opens up whole new problems. On many worlds where criminals were affluent, the criminals often had a stranglehold on entire planets and governments. For example, the Pike Syndicate basically had a complete and utter stranglehold on the Pike's homeworld. So any sign of Republic intervention would be shut down incredibly quickly, lost in a pile of bureaucratic paperwork. Basically meaning that they were untouchable on their homeworld. It gave them a very safe space to operate. We also need to consider the fact that obviously space is very large, and the Republic didn't control all of it. There were still huge sections of the galaxy controlled by other factions, such as the Huts or independent systems, outside of the Republic. And legally, again, the Republic couldn't do anything about it. If criminals were raiding Republic worlds and ships, but escaping to, say, Hut space, the Republic couldn't follow. It couldn't be seen as an invader, as for the big democracy that the Republic was, this would look terrible. At the end of the day, the Republic was a democratic organisation, not a tyrannical ruler that invaded its enemies. We've also got to consider the sheer bureaucracy of it all. The Republic's government was huge, literally tens of thousands if not more cogs all turning to create the Senate and its laws. And the problem with this is having such a large complex system is that you're gonna get corruption you're going to get some bad apples in high places. And these are the sort of people who are going to take bribes and do the bidding of the criminals. Simply put, the Republic wasn't very streamlined. And in many ways, it was far too slow and was shackled by bureaucracy. It could never rise to combat all of these criminal syndicates who were there ready to profit from it. The criminals were very quick to adapt and change their tactics, meanwhile it could take the Republic so long to get anything done that realistically, the criminals had already been and made their money. However, then we get to the Clone Wars, and this brought on huge changes for the whole galaxy. The Republic and CIS now have massive militaries. Policing is now taken far more seriously. However, in wartime, the opportunity to make money is also at an all-time high. Black markets, desperate refugees, and huge dependence on spice. Essentially, you're looking at a higher risk, but a far higher reward scenario. And as we've seen, the criminals of the Star Wars universe are not afraid of risk. So sure, one of their illegal shipments may be shut down and intercepted by the Republic. However, the sheer amount that they were shipping out at this case, it didn't matter because so many were getting through. And realistically, the sheer scale of these criminals' operations made it impossible for the Republic to be able to clamp down on them. For this reason, during the Clone Wars, if anything, crime likely went up significantly, with more desperate or greedy people wanting to make money off the conflict. The Republic continued to be relatively ineffective at fighting them, and despite the war raging on, it was still very bureaucratic and unable to intervene with the larger cartels and syndicates who held huge amounts of power over their native systems. The most obvious example of this would of course be Mandalore and the Shadow Collective. The Republic was so hesitant to invade the world due to the political fallout that they allowed a Sith and his crime syndicate allies to take control over a major system in the galaxy. Now interestingly enough, if the war had ended with a Republic or a CIS victory, it's likely crime would have been stamped out, because at that point, both the Republic and the CIS would still have all of the resources there to be able to effectively fight the criminals, being the droid and clone army. 
However, they would no longer be fighting each other, so they'd have so many more resources at their disposal. Also, during the Clone Wars, the Senate had been empowered so much that they wouldn't have to be as bureaucratic when fighting the criminals. So, realistically, the Empire taking charge was actually a best case scenario for a lot of the criminal syndicates, because the retribution that the Republic would have brought afterwards would have been pretty heavy. But what do you guys think? Was the Republic competent at taking on crime, and how did the Clone Wars affect it? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed, if so, please remember to like, share and sub as it's really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at TheLawGuy and tick the bell for regular updates. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching, I really do hope that you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.